SystemD and WSLG finally work on Windows 10, so you can run SnapD, MicroKRS, and most importantly, Kitty. Hey, Vlad here from devinsidey.com, welcome to another video. If you are new here, you should know that this is mostly a Scala channel, however, I make videos about all kinds of software development related topics, so you might want to look around, maybe you'll find something that you like. I made an ultimate WSL guide a couple of years ago, and right afterwards I received a request to make a video about WSLG. I had to politely decline, because the same as stated in the original guide, to this day I am a full-time developer and only a part-time content creator, and so, Instead of making videos about trending topics like GPT for instance, I make videos about things that improve the developer inside you and me. In order for me to check out WSLG, I needed it to be production ready and it wasn't. In fact, Microsoft tricked us. Shocker, I know. First, they made WSLG available only inside of Windows 10 Insider Builds, and a bunch of people started testing them. Then they released Windows 11, even though they promised that Windows 10 would be the last OS. And then, to add insult to injury, they made WSLG available only on Windows 11. Shocker. Again. I'll leave a link down in the description to a GitHub issue that was open for over a year with a bunch of people begging Microsoft to backport WSLG to Windows 10 and Microsoft Dev stating that it was impossible due to some architectural differences or whatnot. Long story short, they made the allegedly impossible possible, and finally, the WSLG support landed in Windows 10 in late November 2022, a couple of weeks ago, with SystemD a couple of months prior to that. Lord help us all. I'll tell you all about it right after you help me fix this. We're almost at 10k subs and it would be awesome if you could get there before Christmas. Also, please hit the like button while you're at it. It really helps the algorithm to push this video out to more people. Thank you. This video is sponsored by awesome people like yourself who support me on Patreon. Your contributions allow me to pay for a video editor who frees some of my time, which I then again choose to spend with you, whether it's during live streams or answering your questions on Discord. There's many of you and only one of me, so all it takes is a dollar. Thank you. All right, now assuming that you have the latest Windows updates, when you launch one of your WSL2 distributions, you'll probably see a message saying something like, there's a new version, run WSL hyphen hyphen update to update. From now on, WSL is mainly distributed via the Windows Store and you can update it manually by running this command. In fact, even if you haven't installed WSL via the Windows Store, as did I, you can still run this command, and with a little bit of luck, it will work for you the same as it worked for me. You also might want to run WSL hyphen hyphen shutdown right before and after that. Software, am I right? If you don't see a message prompting you for the update, you can still run WSL hyphen hyphen update, and assuming that you have the latest updates, it should work. The update you're looking for is KB5230, and it came out on November 15, 2022, just a couple of weeks ago. If you want to make sure that you have this update installed, there is a Show History button in the Windows Update Center. It should be somewhere at the top. Quick note before we continue, in the original guide we configured an X server manually, and that required a little bit of configuration on the Linux side. Remember, we modified some environment variables. Well, technically, we just exported them. Now, even without removing those variables, I actually managed to run GUI apps without any issues, and I was sure that they were running through WSLG and not through my manually installed Xming server. So technically, you don't need to remove them, but I like to keep my systems clean, so I removed them and I also removed the Xming server from Outer Start. Alright, now, how did I know that the GUI apps actually ran through WSLG and not via the Xming server? Well, before, when I ran them via the Xming server, the frame of the applications was different, and also whenever I made them go full screen, the top menu bar wouldn't disappear. So the first thing I tried was making Sublime go into full screen, and it worked like a charm. Now the second thing I tried was getting IntelliJ IDEA to work, and to this day JetBrands doesn't publish Debian packages, so I pretty much had only two options. The first one was to download the archive, which I did, and it worked. But it also worked before was the Xming server. A better way to install IntelliJ IDEA on Linux, or at least on Ubuntu, is to use their snap packages. Package formats is one of those Linux wars that I have no interest getting into, especially because things like Nix exist. Even if you don't mind using snaps, snap requires snapd to run, which requires systemd, which didn't work on WSL for a very long time, but it recently got implemented and it's only available in the store version, which you have by now because you ran WSL hyphen hyphen update. You need to enable it in slash etc slash wsl.conf, and here are a couple of things that you need to know about systemd on WSL. One, you can disable it later if you wish. Two, you can enable it per distribution. 
Remember, I showed you how to run multiple distributions in the original guide. Three, at least the cold startup time went up quite a bit. It used to take just a couple of seconds on my four-year-old laptop. Now it takes almost 10. The warm startup time also increased a little bit. Now it takes maybe a second or two, but it's still noticeable. And the warm startup means that it's the second time when you log into a shell. So now that I had system D, my Docker daemon would start automatically. And also because I was in Ubuntu, Snap was installed by default. Snap D also started automatically. And so I installed IntelliJ just by following their guide. I couldn't get it to go into full screen mode though. Also, I couldn't launch it from the terminal, which I would really like because I use Nick shells. I could only start it from the start menu in Windows by searching for IntelliJ. Also, you should know that the distribution already needs to be running for this to work. In general, the GUI apps that run via WSLG seem to have a couple of limitations. For instance, I couldn't make them dock to the sides as I would be able to do with the native Windows apps. I also noticed that sometimes the first couple of runs of GUI apps were either very, very slow or just didn't happen at all. It occasionally took me three tries to launch Sublime Text, but only the first start. Once it started, all the stars afterwards were almost instantaneous and never had any issues. I guess there is some infrastructure in the backend that needs some time to bootstrap itself or whatnot. I also have a strange NeoVim bug that causes NeoVim to completely hang when I paste stuff. I don't know if it's related, but it did appear around the time I started messing around with WSLG. Who knows, maybe it's completely unrelated. However, the Axming server used to do some clipboard sharing for me, and now that I don't run it anymore, maybe it is related. In any case, I just didn't have time to dig into it more. One other thing that I couldn't get to work, and I'm not even sure if it should work, but I think it should, I tried to run an entire Ubuntu desktop from WSL, but it wouldn't start for some reason. Again, I didn't have time to play around with it, and also I kind of lost interest, but I'm pretty sure that it should work. Also, I'm still not happy with the terminal emulator options that we have on Windows. My favorite ones are Alacrity and Windows Terminal, but even though it's been two years since my WSL guide, they still either have bugs or at least limitations. I always wanted to try Kitty, but it's not published for Windows. Now I can, and I did. I didn't configure it, but the fact that I can send it into full screen and also the fact that it's not slowed down by too much gives me hope. Maybe I'll make a dedicated video about it once I configure it, but no promises. In any case, you might want to sub. The only thing that is missing for me in WSL is IPv6 support and maybe a couple of stability patches. If you're interested in finding out all the cool things that WSLG can do for you, like audio support for example, I'm going to have a link down in the description to a year old video from the Microsoft devs who worked on it. There's one last thing that I would like to talk about. In the original guide, I mentioned that running the Oracle VirtualBox side by side with WSL slows down the virtual box by quite a huge margin. It's like 30 or 40%. It's unusable at this point. And it's because the WSL requires Hyper-V and uh, the Oracle virtual box at the time couldn't run well on Hyper-V. These days, it seems like it has gotten better. I tried with KVM and Hyper-V. The performance was pretty much on par. However, when I tried to give it more cores than half of what I had, it pretty much wouldn't launch. It would take forever. The screen would just go black. So I could only give it half of my cores. And as such, it was slower than WSL. I'll keep observing this space because occasionally I do want an entire VM and not just WSL. It would be awesome if I could run them side by side without any issues. And that's all I have for you today. It wasn't exactly a tutorial, more like just sharing my experience here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the previous one and i see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from deadinsidey.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you wish to contribute to tech education, please consider doing so on Patreon or GitHub sponsors. And as watched my videos before, and most importantly, take care.